Hello and welcome to digi8.com. In this video, we are going to cover the topic on human capital. Now let's start with the definition of human capital. A collection of human qualities is called human capital. This refers to all the wisdom, judgment, intelligence, experience, abilities, skills and knowledge that a person or group has. These resources are the overall ability of the population that indicates a type of wealth. These can be used to achieve a country or a state's target or at least a part of it. Human capital takes into account assets such as health, skills, intelligence, training, education, etc. It considers what is important to managers like being on time and being loyal. Congregated as the economic value of an employee's abilities and knowledge, the idea behind human capital understands labor is unequal in value. Finally, human capital is immaterial and it is not found on a firm's balance sheet. Moving on to the importance of human capital. Human capital is unique and is not like other capital. Firms require it to meet their targets, grow and stay creative. Firms can put money into human capital. Example, training and education increase both production and quality. Human capital is a total value in the economic terms of the skills and labor that impact productivity. Moving on to who manages human capital in a firm. Human capital is usually overseen by a firm's human resources department. This section of the firm manages workforce optimization, administration and procurement. The other thing it oversees involve analysis and reporting, worker development and training, recruitment and workforce strategy and planning. Moving on to the origin of the term human capital. The initial concept of human capital goes back to at least to the 18th century by Adam Smith. The idea in current times became famous because of Theodore Schultz, Jacob Mincer and Gary Becker. Becker is a Nobel laureate in economy from the University of Chicago. Because he came up with the idea and used models that include human capital as an important part, Nobel Prize for Economics in 2018 was given both to him and Paul Roma. Roma was the founder of present day innovation based strategy to comprehending economic growth. Moving on to calculating human capital. Human capital depends on the resources spent on workers' abilities and information. These are spent on education and they are easy to measure. HR managers can measure overall profits before and after these resources are spent. All return on investment of human capital can be measured by dividing the firm's total profits by the overall resources spent in human capital. For instance, a firm spends $5 million in human capital. Its overall profit is $30 million. Thus, employers can now compare the ROI from human capital annually and keep an eye on how the profit is growing. They can see whether this is correlated to spending on human capital. Moving on to does human capital depreciate? Human capital also goes through depreciation like everyone else. It is usually calculated in salaries or retention in the workforce. The most usual ways of human capital depreciation are mental decline among the employees in terms of work, injury, unemployment or falling behind the latest technology. Moving on to the measurement of human capital. The World Bank publishes human capital index as a measurement of economic success. The index rates countries according to how much is invested in education and healthcare for young people. The top 3 countries in the 2020 index were Singapore with a score of 0.88, Hong Kong and China 0.81 and Japan at 0.8. Now moving on to an example of human capital. In this case it's Jonathan Ivey and Apple. The background to this case in June 2019, Jonathan Ivey said that he was quitting Apple after almost 30 years at the helm of firm's aesthetic vision and design. The brains behind the iPhone, iPod, iMac and most recent launch Apple Watch was forming his own design firm. It is known as Love From and Apple was its very first client in 2020. During the tenure of Jonathan Ivey and Steve Jobs, design was the most important thing. Ivey's resignation highlights the type of critical issues that arise when an organization's strategy and its success are tied to talents like Jonathan Ivey. The scenario. Apple's quick growth was because of two mavericks, as we discussed, Jonathan Ivey and Steve Jobs. The design department also played a vital role and was at the center of the firm. The crisis of mid-2019 made Apple introspect deeply. Was it possible for the firm to replicate the talent that Jonathan Ivey brought? Would the team stick by or leave with him? The Solution In the aftermath of John Ivey leaving Apple, Tim Cook brought many changes to the structure. This indicated huge strategic changes for Apple in the future. Two design experts were declared. Alan D would be the VP of User Interface Design and Ivan Sankey will be the new leader of the Hardware Design Group as VP of Industrial Design. This rearrangement of the firm's topmost managers shows a huge change from a product-based story under Ivy's tenure to a fresh narrative that Apple is a service provider. So that's it folks. This brings an end to the topic on human capital. These are some of the sources and links referred to for the content in the video. Thank you and see you in the next video.